If you want to know what a pain in the rear it is to live with a psychic, then watch this video. So it was years ago, mm -hmm. just when we started living together. Yeah. And it was a Saturday morning, late Saturday morning, uh, slow start to the day. And uh, um, we're in the kitchen and I look over and Satomi's just getting ready to go out the door. And it's kind of a surprise to me because <laughs> I just look over to her and I say, hey, where are you going? I thought we were going to work on those shells and put them together. And I said, uh, without looking at him, facing the door, I'm just going to go out. <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit what it was like, but... <laughs> there was real tension in the room. You could cut it with a knife. I could feel it right away. And like, here's the thing. I've been down this road before. I've done nothing at all. I'm just kind of being normal. And she's upset. I know this has got something to do with me because, hey, everything is about me anyway. Yeah. So I'm feeling like some anxiety building up in me because like I'm thinking like, oh no, this could be headed for a fight. And I say to her, okay, so what's wrong? And I said again to him, I just need to go out <laughs> without looking at him, of course. <laughs> of course. You know, I feel like I'm innocent and all of a sudden I'm being cast as guilty. And so I say, like, I'm going to, like, just hang out here. You can go outside and you can do your own thing. You can be mad if you want, but I'm going to stay here and I'm going to stay centered and just do my own thing. Yeah, and then as soon as I heard him saying that he was going to stay center and he's going to be calm, and I had enough, and I had to tell him, no, you're the one who's upset. You're the one who's mad and pissed off. Being centered and being calm is what you think, and what you think and what you are are different. And I took off. Okay, so then it's like later in the day, dinner time, Satomi's getting dinner ready, she's down in the kitchen, I'm up in the bedroom, and I'm just kind of doing my own thing, and she's making lots of noise. I decide it's like, it's time for a little bit of me time. So I go like into the bathroom, and I settle in, feels like just a couple of minutes into it. No. Okay, so a couple of minutes into it, and all of a sudden I look down, and there's this text. Are you going to be done in the bathroom anytime soon because dinner is getting cold? Oh my god. There's no way she could possibly no I w I'm just being quiet she's making all this noise there she is it's driving me crazy because I, I can't have any space to myself right there's like no place is sacred the bathroom is supposed to be sacred but no it's not she is driving me crazy there is nothing I can think nothing I can feel nothing I can do that she doesn't know about it, oh. Living with a psychic, oh my God. I have no space to myself, that's how I feel. The thing in the kitchen. Okay, so I did have this anger and these deep down unresolved childhood issue, issues going on that were down inside me, but so what? That's my deep down and subconscious, that's my business. That's none of her business, that's none of nobody's business. I chose to push that, those feelings, those unresolved feelings down way down where nobody can see them, right where they belong, right? But it's there and she knows about it and she's getting all upset about it. And it's like, I've done something wrong, but really I haven't done anything consciously. And the thing in the bathroom, okay? Like there I am in my private personal space and I get this text and then like, I feel like she's right there with me and I have no personal space again. Every man knows that the bathroom is his personal private kingdom and the toilet is his throne and it's kind of sacred but like i don't have that space and it, it just it's all just driving me just a little bit crazy so the thing is the thing was already building up for quite some time and i couldn't take it anymore so i was going out to have quiet time so i could calm down but paul didn't like it he got even more pissed off <laughs> and uh, on top of that, what he said was he was going to stay calm and centered. Excuse me, he is so pissed off. That's why I'm heading out. Staying calm and staying centered is what he thinks. And what he thinks and what he is are different. And the thing about the bathroom, I think every woman knows when her husband is in the bathroom. 
right? And then I let him have his quiet time in his quiet space. I do that. But when time is up, time is up, then I call him, come out, right? The thing is, I have had all this buried emotional trauma, right? Your ability is seeing into it and is allowing me to go through that healing process. But it's a very difficult mm -hmm. process for us. If it was a client, then yeah. it's different. Mm -hmm. But with our relationship, yeah. Falling into a fight. Yeah, exactly, right? Uh, it's been quite a ride. <laughs> I feel like I'm fine. And it feels like you're bringing all this stuff, yeah. but it's not you. You're just ahead of the curve of my stuff. Yeah, you used to say, don't tell me what I think. Yeah. Don't tell me what I feel. Yeah. And so it, you bring me all these presents. Here you go. <laughs> but I have to make the choice to look past the stinky wrapping that, they co that it comes in. Yeah, but it's your own stinky wrapping. <laughs> it is my stink. <laughs> and you're doing your best to help me with it. And that's why, actually, I'm so grateful for towards you for helping me with all that. You're welcome. When I learned to stop resisting you, mm -hmm. right? And the messages that you were bringing to me, yes, they were uncomfortable messages. Mm -hmm. Yes, they were, they were in stinky wrapping. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want those messages, but that's what life is like, right? Mm -hmm. Life isn't easy. So if I step back from it though, and I face it and I look for a message that's inside it, mm -hmm. if I look past the drama and I say, what could there be in this difficulty, in this pain that could help me move forward? Mm -hmm. And that's the key is looking for that message, right? Mm -hmm. And Satomi is a messenger, right? Mm -hmm. As an empath, as a psychic, she's a messenger. It's difficult for me too, right? <laughs> I don't want to be his psychic reader all the time. Yeah. I put that aside. It's his journey. Let him walk through it. But then, then it's affecting me. So, okay, I cannot take it anymore. Yeah. Here's a message. So what are you going to do? <laughs> you try to do it so gently and beautifully with me and it's still really rough for you it's my resistance that's what's really the pro been the problem and you feel like there's no space that's your space but if you don't resist it, it doesn't create that tension right she isn't reading me all the time yeah i mean i do have my space if i don't resist and i work through this stuff then it all calms down it quiets down and i and i can be in the bathroom on my own <laughs> it's it's beautiful so if you have somebody in your life who brings you messages that you don't necessarily want to hear, but after you work through it, you, you realize that it really had value for you. If there's somebody in your life like that, then um, please let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear about it. I finally get to say this. If you want to know what a pain in the rear it is to live with a psychic, then be sure to subscribe to our Sakaso YouTube channel. You're welcome. <laughs> And we'll see you soon. Bye.